We're at DevOps Belgium 2018. I'm really pleased to be joined by Adrian Hornsby. Adrian, hi. Hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Yeah, I'm great, it's good to be here. Excellent Second stuff. year. Second year? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, Adrian, you're talking this afternoon, I think. Yeah. Um, you've got a session, Patterns for Building Resilient Software Systems. Yes. Tell us a bit more about that. Right, so it's a session uh, around resiliency, right? Resiliency is the idea that you can run software in an environment where failure is acceptable. In fact, you know, many of the software systems are so big nowadays that you can't run them all the time 100% perfect, right? There's always a part somewhere that is going to be breaking. And you want to build software that can be resilient to these kind of failures, right? Random failures somewhere in the architecture. So this talk is actually a collection of some of the patterns that I've uh, collected in the last 10, 15 years uh, from my own experience, but also from meeting customers and helping them. I joined AWS as a solutions architect, so I worked with a lot of customers back then. And so this talk is a kind of a collection of all the patterns and the good practice to actually try to build software around accepting failures. So I guess you can't make something better unless you understand fully what's wrong with it. Oh, so you're, you're going to breaking things. So you're going to break <laughs> some stuff. Yes. And uh, make things better from there. Yeah, and I think, you know, the, the resiliency, the idea of resiliency kind of leads very well towards a discipline called chaos engineering. And chaos engineering is, is the idea that uh, we want to break things to see how actually uh, the production system really reacts. And in fact, it's more, it's just not go around and break things like this the first day you want to do chaos engineering. is really practice breaking things so that you build an intuition within your team to how do you react when the real outage arrives, right? And actually also just verify that your assumption is great. For, for example, you have a, an application talking to a, a database and you say, okay, uh, my software is supposed to continue writing to the database if failure happens somewhere here, right? Well, instead of just saying it, we want to try it. So yeah. to try it, you just do it and then verify it. And this is how you learn, actually. And it's very common to uh, kids, right? When I was a kid, I was breaking things all the time to try to uh, figure out how they work. Did and you I put any of them back together again? No, no actually, no. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> Good. Um, but, I mean, th this kind of stuff's changed, hasn't it? So yeah. there's traditional models, you know, you build systems, avoiding mistakes, dodging yeah. failures, like testing things in isolation yeah. and in production. How, how have things moved? How right, well, I think the, the discipline has moved really um, in parallel with the change from, you know, system that were monolith, you know, a system that maybe was just an application to now more microservice yeah. architectures. Uh, where you might have like, you know, 50, hundreds, or even thousands. Uh, in Amazon, we have thousands of microservices talking to each other just for a single home page, right? Right. And it's just impossible that at any given moment, everything works. It's just not possible. So you have to architect and you have to think when you design an application about what happened if something fails, right? Yeah. So are there common mistakes that you see um, from yourself, mistakes yeah. that you've made, um, but also that you see other people making when they're, when they're looking to build resilient systems? Yeah, and it's actually the topic of this talk, right? But uh, for me, the, the biggest mistake I've seen is humans, right? Okay. Uh, I think it's, we tend to think we know everything and we are very biased towards what we love. You know, I always say developers love code you know, they hug codes and, and when you get criticized, it's, it's painful because you've taken so much time writing it and, and you're doing things like this. And when you go into the discipline of breaking things and, you know, to really verify if uh, it's actually solid, very often emotions get uh, touched and, yeah. uh, and sometimes <laughs> it can explode. <laughs> yeah. So I've seen situations where actually a whole group started to scream at each other, which is not necessarily what we want to do because, you know, you want to guide that learning experience into control and, and, and kind of more dis disciplined way. And this is what chaos engineering is doing, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So I know that people will be able to, A, come along this afternoon, but also watch it on YouTube afterwards. Any other places where they can get some good advice and tips from you? Yeah, so I'm, uh, I'm very much online. Uh, at Orn, A-D-H-O-R-N, on Twitter, on Medium. Uh, you can find me uh, on Amazon. Uh, 
uh, YouTube uh, all over the place as well. I, I talk a lot, so <laughs> kind of if you just add Orn somewhere online, you'll find me. Especially if you are interested in residency uh, and, and system, I have a big series of blog posts on Medium, right? This is where I really delve into the topic and, and try to uh, even learn myself. I, you know, I use blogging to deep dive in the topic, learn new things, how people do it, and then I use that for building presentations. That's actually uh, the way I work as well. Perfect. Thanks for coming along and speaking to us. Thank you very much Cheers. for inviting me, Mark. Thanks. Yeah.